Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about strong induction. So what is strong induction? Well, it's a form of mathematical induction. It's a proof technique. It's used to prove a universal property and it's used only on well-ordered sets. So you might be thinking, this sounds really familiar. This sounds exactly like mathematical induction. And in a way, it is just another way of doing the same thing. There's only one way it's different from the method we talked about before. So how is this any different from regular induction? Well, in regular induction, we always show that when a property applies to one element in a set, then it also applies to the next one. You might see it written out like this, P of K implies P of K plus one. We can't show this when we use strong induction. So strong induction is used when we're not able to show the above. Dominoes is a great way to show induction in general, but it doesn't really work to demonstrate strong induction. So don't let your mind go back to dominoes to understanding it. I haven't really found a great analogy yet for strong induction, but anyway, it's just a little bit different than dominoes. Because in dominoes, if one element falls, the next one will. This isn't always the case with strong induction, so just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to try to give an example of where k being true doesn't necessarily imply k plus 1. Imagine you have a whole bunch of people, a countless number of people, and they're all given a number, 1 through however many people there are. And there also is a line of chairs. And I want to prove to you that each person will sit in a chair whose position corresponds to the number of the person. For example, person number one will sit in the first chair, person number 15 will sit in the 15th chair, and so on. Now, all the people abide by one rule. They will not sit in a chair whose position is greater than their number. Person number five will not sit in a chair whose position is greater than five. If you're person number three, you will sit in chair number one, two, or three, but you won't sit in any other chairs. All right, so let me see if I can prove to you that each person will end up sitting in the chair whose position corresponds to their own number. Okay, so our base case is that person one sits in the first chair. Well, person one won't sit in the second chair because the second chair has a position whose number is greater than one. In fact, any chair has a position whose number is greater than one besides the first chair. So yes, person one must sit in the first chair. Now let me see if we can prove the rest just by using the method we learned in the last video. In my inductive hypothesis, I assume that person K sits in the Kth chair. Can I show now that person K plus one will sit in the K plus oneth chair? Well, not really, because if person K sits in chair number K, I know person K plus 1 can't sit in that chair because it's occupied, and that it won't sit in any of the chairs greater than K plus 1, because that's part of the rules of my analogy. But there's nothing stopping person K plus 1 from sitting in chair K minus 1. That's all fair and good. So how can I prove that every person will sit in their corresponding chair? I can't use my regular method, but this is where strong induction comes in. So I'm going to propose a different inductive hypothesis. I'm going to suppose that all people numbered less than or equal to person K sit in their corresponding seats. So person number two sits in seat number two, person number 20 sits in seat number 20, all up to person K. So can I now prove that person K plus one will sit in chair K plus one? Well, as you can see, he has to, because he will not sit in any seat greater than K plus one, but all the seats in positions less than K plus one have already been occupied. So the only seat left for him to choose is seat K plus one. So because of this, I've proved to you that every person will sit in their corresponding seat. And I've shown you this through strong induction. The reason this works is because I know that person one has to sit in seat one. 
And if person 1 sits in seat 1, then person 2 will have to sit in seat 2. And if both person 1 and 2 sit in their corresponding seats, then person 3 has to do the same. And this process will continue until all the chairs are filled with their corresponding person. So really, the only way strong induction is different from regular induction is the hypothesis. In strong induction, if we only assume that something is true for k, it doesn't help us show that anything is true for k plus 1. So this does not happen in strong induction. p of k does not imply p of k plus 1. Instead, we assume that something holds for all n between 1 and some number k. If this is true, then we try to show that the property holds for k plus 1. And if we are successful, we have used strong induction to prove a universal statement about an ordered set. Thank you for watching.